My name is Brianna Hosteller. I'm from Old Dominion University. Matthew Pearson and I did a study on uh, Gray's theory of reinforcement sensitivity theory um, in relation to alcohol-related consequences, the behavioral inhibition and activation systems, and self-regulation. Uh, so what we wanted to look at was how self-regulation can kind of buffer our um, biological emotion systems um, that may inhibit or activate ourselves to behave in a certain way. So we took 273 college students who were all self-reported drinkers and we ran through questionnaires like for self-regulation. Um, we measured that from the short self-regulation questionnaire. Uh, for the behavioral inhibition system, which is our emotional system which regulates our behavior in a way of if we are afraid of the, something, of punishment, then that we would have an overactive uh, behavioral inhibition system. Our behavioral activation system, which we also measured, um, would promote uh, behavior to attain the reward regardless of the consequences. Um, so then we wanted to, we used two seven day grids to see how much everybody was drinking. And then for alcohol related problems, we used the Rutgers Alcohol Problem Index. Um, it could be anything like, I didn't do my homework or you know any kind of neg negative consequence. So we went through it and we showed that those that do have a higher degree of behavioral activation system do have more alcohol problems. But on our graph, you can see that if even those with high behavioral activation systems, that self-regulation will actually buffer it. So regardless of whether you have overactive behavioral inhibition system or activation system, self-regulation does buffer um, the effect of alcohol-related consequences. Um, so basically what this kind of infers is from an, um, a prevention um, perspective, you know, just kind of boosting self-regulatory practices can kind of guard against experience alcohol-related consequences, especially among the college student population. Thank you.